for the world of opera, her place in history, is a kind of uh, total commitment to opera as a serious art form that can enrich our lives, shed some meaning on the human condition, and it's not just a, an art form for rich people sung by fat sopranos and uh, half the audience is sound asleep. She made opera, I think, theater. She made it matter. I think she brought opera very much into the modern era. And uh, she's a genius that way. Uh, she also had a genius, it seems, for publicity. Uh, the press was always fascinated by her. It was always a great story. In Early in her career, she married a much older man who uh, nurtured her and helped her. Uh, she didn't have to take menial jobs. She made her debut in a leading part. Many famous singers start in small parts and work their way up to singing Tosca. She was always Tosca or Aida or Norma. And then she went on a very uh, famous diet. And she was never enormous, but she was a solid linebacker type soprano. And suddenly she looked like Audrey Hepburn. Uh, then the love affairs with, uh, when she left her husband for Aristotle Onassis, and then his great betrayal. And he, he, all of this is the fodder for daily news. So uh, when she was finally fired uh, at the Met, I remember very well, the uh, daily news headline says, Bing fires Collis. And you couldn't say, Gelb fires Voigt, and people would know what you're talking about. But everyone in New York knew what Bing fires Collis meant, those, those three words. And uh, unfortunately, she's be, become more famous to many people for her offstage life than her actual career, which was relatively brief as singers go. Joan Sutherland was singing well into her 60s. Uh, Maria Collis stopped singing in her 40s, effectively. There was an occasional series, you know, four performances here, two years off, three performances of Tosca. And then the last four or five years of her life, uh, she didn't sing at all, though she was always in the news. Whenever she went out in the evening, she was photographed. But I think people who see this play, uh, who are intrigued by her, and I think it's hard not to be intrigued by the personality, can certainly go and buy her recordings, all of which are still available. There's not a single one of her recordings that is out of print. And as I have her say in the play, because I believe it, it's all there in the recordings. She says to the audience, it doesn't matter if I sing or not, because at this point in the master classes, when she gave them historically at Juilliard, would she come out of retirement or not? Because it's a fact that singers can go through bad vocal periods, restudy, retrain, re-examine the, their techniques, and re-emerge triumphantly. That did not happen with her. Uh, there is. Uh, truth uh, validation to the fact that she went to Juilliard while she was giving the master classes and worked several hours a day with a vocal coach. And the voice just never really uh, returned to its former glory. And then she, the last time she sang in New York, she gave a, a, a joint recital with Giuseppe Di, Di Stefano, a tenor with whom she made most of her recordings. And both singers were well past their prime. And, they were sold out, but uh, the critics were very harsh, and I think the audiences were very disappointed. Uh, what was left was not the voice I remember hearing as a 12, 13-year-old living in Corpus Christi, Texas. We could get the opera broadcast from Mexico City relayed through Monterey, Mexico, and I heard this incredible voice on the radio, and her, she was known then as Maria Menigini Callas because her husband was Meneghini, and she you know, had all three names, which is very European for a, a soprano to take, put her husband's name in the middle, and then uh, Maria Meneghini Callas, and I fell in love with his voice. And then suddenly she became famous, and she was on the cover of Time magazine, and she became. So in the, I'd say it's about 16 years, she really had an active career I'd say uh, 14 of them were in full fame of the world. Everyone knew who she was. It was very media. It was like a Jimmy Dean of opera. I mean, very big, big f flame and very 
swift extinction of that flame.